Here is the greatest thing about decisions. If three people leave with this one tonight, then I've won this whole VCon. There's a secret that you don't know about decisions. It's called, you wouldn't have known the alternative, and so it doesn't fucking matter. When you make a decision, you've made a decision, and you actually don't know how the other way would have worked out. You wouldn't have known. You think you would have known. Well, if I went to Amazon instead of this bullshit company 20 years ago, I would have made all this money. You might have got fired from Amazon. You might have been going to work one day at Amazon and gone to a car accident that changed your health. You don't know. Attention is the number one asset. What's up everybody? I'm sure you're hearing all this background noise. I'm at Cannes. You're about to listen to the closing keynote from last year's VCon. Make sure you go to vcon.co to pick up your tickets. We're in LA this year, August 9th to the 11th. Uh, pretty excited about it, LA Live. Anyway, we would love to see uh, all of you at VCon, V-E-E-C-O-N dot C-O, VCon 2024, August 9th to the 11th, Los Angeles, LA Live. Come hang. VCon 2023, how we feeling? VCon, how did we feel about this year? I'm incredibly humbled. I, I'm just incredibly humbled by what has transpired here over the weekend. Let me hear it one more time for each other what we did here. I was just backstage and one of the uh, partners in putting this together, she came up to me and she said, I've been doing conferences and events my whole life, I'm an event planner. I've been doing it for 30 years. Never in her life has she ever been to a conference that every person, attendee, speaker, infrastructure, every human was kind, brought value, wanted to engage, felt safer. What we are doing here matters and let this be very clear. That isn't done by a human, that is the collective of the humans that are here and I need you to make some fucking noise for each other right now. I need you to make much more noise, for, make more fucking noise for each other. I thank you, I thank you from the bottom of my heart to be a representation of how I was taught what I grew up with, and most of all, what I deeply believe in my soul. There will be mistakes, there will be missteps. It is the human spirit. I absolutely captain this brand and this ship and I promise you more mistakes. I don't want to make them. There will be missteps. There are plenty of things that go along the way. We're fucking human. The number one thing I promise you that I've sensed in the hours and hours and hours and hours I spent over the last three days talking to all of you is we need to be kinder to each other and what I mean by that is it starts with all of you being kinder to yourselves. The number one takeaway I have from this is, this is if this is the nicest community that this human has interacted with in 30 years, we have so much more opportunity to go because I know how much pain is still sitting inside of so many people because I've interacted with all of you for the last three days. Fear, pain, hurt, fear. I wanna talk about that. I want everybody to sit because I wanna be fair to everybody, please. <laughs> You're welcome, John. I love you. I love you so fucking much, you don't even know. So I did something the other day on community. I know some of you are following me on my community text in the US because it's only a US product, 212-931-5731. And I asked some of you to ask a question about fear because I wanted the opening keynote to be about my family and I wanted the closing keynote to be about my friends. And so this keynote today is going to be with you involved. So I've queued up, I actually don't know the videos. I asked the team to go through all the videos that were submitted. 
and I'm gonna answer Q&A right now based on the questions from y'all, and then we're gonna talk, and we're gonna close this thing out, and then we're gonna go to dinner, and then we're gonna come back here tonight for Jordan Sparks. I want every single person in this stadium back here tonight for Jordan Sparks for two reasons, because I want that music to hit your soul, and more importantly, or equally important, I want to sneak in a couple more high fives, Q&A, and selfies before we get out of here. I know I've gotten to a lot of you, but not all of you, and I will roam and hang out and try to get involved, so I expect everyone. I've got an Uno tournament tonight where I'm gonna whip some ass. I always beat you, I always beat you, and you know it, you beat me once, random, it was some bullshit. We got card collecting night. The card thing is crazy. I need to get more serious about that. I invite all of you to go to Chicago at the National Card Convention in July. I'm setting up shop. I'd like to see you all, but let me go into the keynote. Let's queue up the first question hey, for- Gary, we're on the way to VCon. I am often crippled by the fear of making the wrong decision. The wrong decision to uh, go after my dreams or uh, go after something I like to do and particularly missing out time with loved ones or being away from my dog here that I love so much. Um, I wanna be in so many different places at one time and I am often crippled by the decision of what to actually be doing. Um, give me your advice, thank you, love you. Let's clap it up for Gabriel. who I've seen multiple times at Begun. Gabriel, this is simple, this is something all of you are dealing with. Everyone is crippled to make a decision because they don't want to make the wrong decision. You're scared to make the wrong decision and think about how awesome what he said was. Most people are like, bro, I don't want to make the wrong decision, Gary, because this one might have made me more money than this one. He's saying, I don't want to make the wrong decision because if I make the wrong decision, it came at the expense of spending time with my loved ones and my dog. That makes so much sense to me. That's even a more noble version of the fear of making the wrong decision. Here is the greatest thing about decisions. If three people leave with this one tonight, then I've won this whole VCon. There's a secret that you don't know about decisions. It's called, you wouldn't have known the alternative, and so it doesn't fucking matter. When you make a decision, You've made a decision and you actually don't know how the other way would have worked out. You wouldn't have known. You think you would have known. Well, if I went to Amazon instead of this bullshit company 20 years ago, I would have made all this money. You might have got fired from Amazon. You might have been going to work one day at Amazon and gone to a car accident that changed your health. You don't know. The fuck's the matter with all of you? Nobody fucking knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Enough. You can't fear decisions. It's the way we live as humans. You're making decisions every day. You decided to come here. You might have not. We are crippled by the unknown when we can't control it. We are, I mean, the amount of questions that were asked to me the last three days, asking to control some shit that you don't control. You have to let go. What you're really saying is, I'm scared to fuck up and then have people judge me for it. You gotta make decisions and you gotta move. The answer to your question, Gabrielle, is you have no alternative. Being a human being, is making decisions and living with it. That's the game, and there's no other way to do it. Or just chill with your dog every day. I don't fucking know. Run it. Hey, Don. Hey, Gary. What is your advice for a mom like myself who took a hiatus from corporate to raise her family and now has fear around the gap in her resume? because it doesn't actually reflect what she's capable of on the job. What's your advice for women like me? Clap it up for Nikki. I got a great news alert. Great news alert. This resume sh shit is bullshit. I have great 
news alert for all of you. The resume is some 1992 shit. I don't think I've ever looked at a resume in my fucking life. A better one, one of the things that impacted me at the selfie station, a young woman told me I made a video, which I remember, of talking about like so many of you, this is gonna hit heavy. As a matter of fact, if this hits heavy, make some noise, because I love this one. It's even, I'm gonna answer this one. No, I don't mean hitting heavy the overall thing, I know that, but wait. I mean this little part I'm about to say. A young woman came up to me and said, you made a video that changed my life. The video was, you said it was okay for me to quit if I was in a toxic job, even though I was only in it for six months, because I was scared that if my resume had me somewhere for six months, it would look bad, and that was some shit the old world was teaching all of us, and you told me it was okay, and I quit, and I've been so much happier. How many people here, by way of making sound, are scared to leave their job because they don't like how it's gonna look on the resume because it's such a short window. Good, so 23 people just got the fucking answer they needed. (laughs) Nikki, to answer your question, you are so fortunate to be living in the world that we're living in right now, which is based on the following. Companies are looking at the resume less and less. Companies are looking at what college you went to less and less. The world moves. It ebbs and flows. 70 years ago, nobody gave a fuck about what college you went to. It was vocational. It was skill-based. Last 50 years, that fucking college thing mattered. When me and my fucking boys right there went to Mount Ida, nobody, let's fucking go. Everyone thought we were fucking losers. Nobody's ever heard of Mount Ida. And I promise you when I look at all of them and what they've accomplished and who they are as men, we fucking won. So Nikki, to answer your question, every company that gives a shit that you were a stay-at-home mom and don't realize that the skill sets that you learn of raising children are wildly, wildly relevant for the world we live in today is a fucking company that you don't want hiring you in the first fucking place. Hard skills are a commodity. AI can do that shit. Soft skills of managing humans is the fucking game. Stay at home moms, understand that shit way more than you fuckers out there. Next. My question to you is, but I kind of asked you already when I just met you person over there, um, and you encouraged me to do this video. My thing is fear, right? Fear of doing this video, uh, fear of public speaking, fear of trying new things, fear of starting that uh, Airbnb art class. So I have put off like so many things uh, just because fear of rejection, fear of failure. Um, I would love to get rid of that fear and just say, you know, Fucking and, and do it, but I, I just can't. So, any uh, any advice that you have, really appreciate it. Let's clap it up for Marcy. This is a good one. This is universal, my friends. What's so great about doing the selfie thing for three days and just standing there and doing it with all of you is you can like start to poke. You know, my content, I can only do so much. I give you the this, and sometimes, and like a lot of times that it's humbling, it works. But you know what it is in real life. Sometimes you gotta go boom, and you gotta go back, and I gotta back, it's like ping pong. We gotta go back and forth a couple times. This one, if it resonated for you, is super universal. The reality is, is most of you are scared to fail in front of someone. The fear of failure is not an insular thing, it's an external validation or reputation thing. If you are scared out there to fail in stuff and not do stuff, it's because you're worried about letting someone down and or you've been conditioned to be shameful of losing. I don't attack eighth place trophies for kicks and giggles. 
I'm mad at eighth place trophies not because I love competing and I want to be a winner or first is the only thing and everything else sucks. I fucking hate eighth place trophies because we're teaching children that losing is bad. We're giving them a trophy because they are being told if you lose, it's so bad that we have to hide it by giving you this fake ass trophy. We're conditioning these children to be scared of losing. I don't know if anybody's heard the news alert. Life is only about losing. Life's about losing. We're all losing micro losses constantly. We're constantly losing. You f- we're fucking losing every day. You need to fall in love with micro losing, which is how you get macro winning. You understand? What Marcy has to figure out is who she's scared to lose in front of her. Her mom? Her dad? Three different people said, I'm scared to lose in front of my children. I don't want them to think I lost. I said, no child. So relationship is based on their parents' business success. No child is disappointed if their parents don't build a big company. Children are disappointed in their parents when they don't get unconditional love. There's unlimited people. If you're in here unconditionally loving your parent, but your parent wasn't a massive business success, make some fucking noise. One more time. If you are here and you love the fuck out of your parents, yet they weren't crushing it financially, clap it the fuck up. Now, now, if you are sitting here and you fucking hate your parents strictly because they sucked in business only, make some noise. You're a piece of shit. (laughs) One piece of shit and universal after fucking may shit. Clap it the fuck up. (laughs) Does anybody else feel like the last three, four minutes, like eventually we just like, like, I almost feel like VCon needs to just change everything. Like we just have to fucking change people's perspectives. Like how is anyone confused about I need to win in business for my kids to be proud hearing what we just heard? How are you fucking confused? You make up shit. My friends, I love you with all my heart, but a lot of you make up shit. We make up shit because we believed fake society. Somebody said, bro, I feel like you got me out of the matrix. And I'm like in it now. Like, I'm like, it's not the matrix, my man. It's called perspective. The matrix we hear about, it's called perspective. You wanna decide everything is shit? Everything is shit. You wanna decide everything is good? Everything is good. This is not delusion. This is how you deal with shit. And there's just too many people hurting and insecure inside, which is why they deal with venom. And we need to fucking figure out how to make the world friends with each other. Do you understand? She needs to figure out who she's scared to lose in front of and she needs to deploy therapy, meditation, putting positivity in her ears and most of all have the conversation with the person. Most of you are here that have any anxiety in your chest are one singular conversation away of saying it out loud to the person that's fucking you up, normally one of the four to seven people closest to you in the world, and if you leave VCom with anything, not a fucking pin, though they're cool. Even not even the great new friends you've made, which is fucking profound, it's with the courage to go home and have one conversation that you've been sitting on. You need to tell someone in your life that their judgment of you has become your judgment of yourself and you're fucking done with that shit. Throw it up.
It was good. Uh, Packer for VCon, saw the text. Um, one question I think would be helpful for a lot of people to answer is, you know, people struggle with this fear of how do I express myself? How do I feel good about who I am when I'm in a social situation? What's my identity? Who am I? And I think it takes time for some people to get to a point where they have a confidence in who they are and they know who they are. What advice do you have for people to get closer to that point um, so that they can really just feel that like, confident with themselves? And what exploration or ideas or hacks do you think will help people get in touch with who they are? Let's clap it up for Daniel. This question really matters a lot to me. Run it back one more time, I want you to pay attention. Because I was doing this thing and you might have been not paying attention. Good. Listen. Uh, Packing for VCon, saw the text. Um, one question I think would be helpful for a lot of people to answer is, you know, people struggle with this fear of how do I express myself? How do I feel good about who I am when I'm in a social situation? What's my identity? Who am I? And I think it takes time for some people to get to a point where they have a confidence in who they are and they know who they are. What advice do you have for people to get closer to that point um, so that they can really just feel that like, confident with themselves? And what exploration or ideas or hacks do you think will help people get in touch with who they are? I got this. I don't know if you heard, but high school is over. The amount of people that put other people's opinions of them on a pedestal is an issue. It is a concern of mine even with myself. I, don't, I, I would die if you valued my opinion of you over your opinion of yourself. When I tell you to answer his question directly, how do you go through the system? It's one of the biggest reasons I'm so excited about VCon. As I pushed early on and as how I tried to find other moments with all of you, pushing you to the answer to this question, which is called practice. The way you get better at anything in the world is practice. You wanna get better at basketball, you practice. You wanna get better at singing, you practice. You wanna get better at DJing, you practice. You wanna cook better, you practice. You wanna be a better entrepreneur, you practice. You wanna get better at having self-confidence, you practice on not valuing someone else's opinion over your own opinion of yourself. You practice by putting yourself out there more. More, more. The context of this conference is super powerful and will be no question an aggressive theme of mine for 2024 is to push you to say hello to more people. More, more, because what you're gonna get here, as you know, is positive reinforcement. You're gonna get reciprocated likely at a high percentage in a good way. You may, by the way, I'm not naive. I'm sure that even though we tried to push this nice movement like all this, that some people weren't receptive and things of that nature, they might have been dealing with something, they might be introverted themselves, but you get practice. The way you get more confident in yourself is you stop putting other people's opinions of yourself in front of yours. Then they go to me, but Gary, what if it's my opinion of myself that I suck? Then I remind them that that was instilled in you. If you think you suck as you sit here today, that you suck, I want you to understand something. That was somebody else's voice putting that inside of your head. That person felt sucky about themselves too. Something I'm about to start making a lot of content around is called, fuck your grandparents. <laughs> yep, new big pillar for me coming in 2024. Whole framework, it's called fuck your grandparents. Let me tell you why. Oh, so many people in here running around with so much fucking anger and hate towards their mom and their dad and giving granny a pass when she was the one that fucking made them. So many people in this room mad as fuck at daddy when daddy's dad fucked them the fuck up. So a lot of you love grandma. She gave you some cookies and shit. Hate your fucking mom but the grandma was the fucking problem. But here's where it gets interesting. 
2026, I'm coming out with fuck your grandparents, parents. <laughs> My friends, how about instead of being really fucking mad at your parents, then moving that on to hating the shit out of your grandparents, then deciding your great grandparents were the actual shit, and then starting some weird fucking family tree fucking hate framework. How about we start deploying compassion? How about you start feeling bad for your mom and dad? How about the people here that haven't talked to a relative, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a mom or an aunt, how about you leave VCon and fucking call them and say, I'm sorry because this shit doesn't actually fucking matter. And you know what's most interesting to me? is how not loud that clap is, right? You know what was just interesting about everything? Is y'all aren't ready. You, want, you like resentment as your partner. You like the ability to blame someone else. We need to get off that drug. We need to start deploying compassion, not resentment. You wanna build a business with this emotional framework? You're not building shit until you're good. You aren't building shit until you're fucking good. Do you understand? Y'all aren't ready, but I'm telling you, me and Snoop 2026, fuck your grandparents, go. Run it. Hey Gary, I would love to know how you teach people how to take fear and to actually flip it around and to turn it into a strength. (laughs) Great question. One more time. Hey Gary, I would love to know how you teach people how to take fear and to actually flip it around and to turn it into a strength. Let's clap it up for Dylan. I wanted to talk about fear today because it is the punchline. Just so you know, the world is weaponizing fear to make you think shit. Everybody, left, right, up, down, this, that, country, like everybody does the same shit. I don't want to hear your boring conversations about politics or this, that, it's all the same shit. Everyone's imposing fear on you, everyone. Everything you must do is, to the answer of this question, understand fear, why? Why are you scared of your kids getting kidnapped and you won't let them go out? Really, the media pumps it in your head because fear gets ratings, doesn't it? Fear gets clicks. Fucking pisses me off. The way I teach people is we talk about it. I just don't think, I mean, every day that goes by, I think about fear. I spend an obnoxious amount of time on fear. My intuition is that most people in this room are not spending every day thinking about how fear plays a part in their life. Why are they scared and what are they scared of? The answer to the question is that it's not that I know that I teach, it's that I know that it's something we need to talk about. And the more we talk about it, the more likely we can do something about it. The more educated we are. People are like, Gary, you hate education. I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? I don't hate education. All I do is education. I hate the way that education is being sold to our children in 2023. We need to educate more about fear, understand fear, and understand it. That's how. Let's keep it going. Hey, what's up, Gary? Uh, Thank you for the event. I want to ask you a question. Can you tell us uh, one time uh, when you take a big risk, conquered your fear, things went extremely great, and then another time when you conquer your fear, like you uh, do that things and the things went extremely wrong. Um, this is from James, thank you. Thank you James, let's clap it up. I was scared to ride my bike. I 
think I was like nine or 10. Everybody else had been riding their bike. I didn't want to scratch my fucking knee. I was scared to swim. I was old as fuck. My sister, I was playing knock hockey at a pool place and I overheard that my sister, I think my mom was like, yay, Liz is swimming. I fucking stopped playing knock hockey. I was nine and a half. I ran and jumped in the pool and tried to make pretend that I learned how to swim first. I was scared to ask girls out. I was scared to do a million fucking things. Fear is part of it. To answer your question, every time I was scared, once I did it, I wasn't fucking scared anymore. This is why I think kids should still be fighting each other. I think one of the things that we fucked up, besides eighth place trophies, is kids don't fight in grammar school anymore. I think you should all go home from VCon and tell your little ones to punch some kid in the face tomorrow. Not for your kid, but once that kid gets punched in the face, they won't be scared of getting punched in the face anymore. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not fucking kidding. But why I wanted to tell that story is we need to think. If you sterilize everything, you groom zoo animals. I don't know if you know what happens when a zoo animal gets put back in the wild. It gets killed in 37 seconds. We need to get comfortable with fear and losing as a society, understand it, play with it, and build. The answer to your question, brother, is everything I was scared of once I did it was a win, and it's never been a loss in my life. It might have not worked out the way I wanted to, but I promise you, I don't even remember. I've lost so much. I've got so many micro losses. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm ringing doorbells at eight years old trying to sell something. When the first four people say no, those are losses. I've lost so much, it's my comfort zone. I'm a fucking Jets fan. <laughs> bunch of buddies in my, bunch of people rolling, what, how'd you feel yesterday with the Andrew Schultz roast? I'm like, motherfucker, I'm from Jersey. I was born in the 80s, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. My friends made fun of me way worse than that last night when I went in between one class to another in fucking the hallway, motherfucker. <laughs> Give a fuck about some jokes. We need to be tougher, we need to get more comfortable with fear. One more, I know I'm running late, but I'm fucking feeling it. Yo, this is my fucking conference. This is my fucking conference. Run it. Gary, super grateful to have met you today. You walked up to me and said hi, which is super cool of you. My question is, how can I let my colleague's employees feel safe when he uses fear to get them to do things without undermining his authority? One more time, he, one more time when he was saying he. One more time, one more time. Gary, super grateful to have met you today. You walked up to me and said hi, which is super cool of you. My question is, how can I let my colleague's employees feel safe when he uses fear to get them to do things without undermining his authority? Got it, so it seems like there's a boss above. So look, this fucking notion that fear is a great motivator is actually true. The problem is, it's not sustainable. It works in the short term, but it fucks up the whole system. You may get what you want in the short term, but deep down, all those people fucking hate you. And if they hate you, they'll steal from you, they'll backstab you, they'll leave you, and how can you blame them? You fucking used fear to motivate them. You're the worst. So the answer to this question is it seems like he's a senior dude with a boss that uses fear. How does he help? What he does, and a lot of you are doing right now, is you're a buffer, right? You eat the shit from him, but you try to make it good for your little crew. How many people right now are in a corporate or business environment where the ultimate boss drives fear and you're trying to be the middle person to balance it, to protect them, but you're eating the shit from the boss? Clap your hands. Stand up, actually. Stand up. Stand the fuck up if you're one of these people right now. Please don't bullshit me. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Stand up. Every one of those people need to quit their fucking job. Thank you, you can sit. Now, 
easy for me to say all fancy on this fucking stage. What I'd probably do first is have one real kind, candor conversation. Hey boss, I've been here for three years, two years, six months, nine years. This is the real situation. This is it. You're scaring people, I'm trying to make it, but it's wearing on me, it's not sustainable, it's not my business. Are you capable of adjusting to this? Maybe I'm the first person ever telling you this. Maybe you don't even see it. Maybe you were trained by fear, the grandparent thing. But you have to have one conversation and then see if it does anything. All of you should be having one real conversation, kind candor, right? You don't have to be mean to your boss. Have empathy for your boss in that situation. Maybe that's how they got it, trained to build what they want, but you need to have it. You need to have it and you need to see what happens. That's the answer. One more. That's it? No more? That's it? Good. You have something to say? Get up here, Kiwi. Let's clap it up for the Kino Koala. I see this fucker all over the world. He gets to go to every keynote that I have. See him everywhere. He waved at me. This is some improv shit. Let's see what the fuck happens. I'm terrified of public speaking, so here we fucking go. <laughs> so. That must be the, honestly, top five moments for me. The fact that the person that bought the Kiwi, the Kino Koala, is scared fucking shitless of public speaking and now has asked for the mic in the second year of VCon means this fucking community is doing something right. Let's stand up and make some fucking noise for this motherfucker. So, I got the Kino Koala just before VCon last year. First time meeting Gary at VCon last year. I've been to multiple keynotes. I've listened to hundreds of hours of his stuff. And it's always been just start and lots of insecurity, lots of bullshit in my head, etc., etc. So I'm going to these keynotes and I go to one in Naples, Florida, uh, some brokers thing in January. And my wife last year bought me a GoPro for go dive in Mexico. I went to a gift goat event and I wore it on my chest and Gary made some comments. Got back, looked at the content, heads were missing. So I put it on top of my head. I get to Naples and I'm filming it and I'm, as we're walking out after the keynote, I'm talking to D-Rock and I'm saying how, you know, this isn't my thing, I'm very insecure and all these kind of things. And he leans in and he says, dude, you got a fucking camera on your head. <laughs> so from that point on, I went to a sports betting conference last week, 1,500 people likely, only one there with a GoPro on the head. I come to this thinking, I wouldn't be the only one with a GoPro on my head, and here we are, only person with a GoPro on my head. So, I am, I am a perfect example. I've been in an industry of sports betting for 30 years. I know my shit. I'm more confident and understand everything in this space, but I'm terrified and speaking and getting out there and showing this stuff. So thanks to Gary again, having done all this stuff, put the GoPro on the head, here the fuck I am. That was terrifying. I'm proud of you. That was amazing. I have, I have, I have, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, and he just whispered, that was terrifying. The good news is, you just practice something that was incredibly, by the way, one of the things that most people in the world are scared of, public speaking, you just conquered that or started the process and you deserve a massive round of applause. Oh, oh, oh. I, I have bad news though. I have bad, bad, bad news. I have bad news. You're also a fucking liar. There's somebody else with a GoPro. All right, get out of here. 
Get out of here, you dorks. People are obsessed with judging things while they're still in progress. People are obsessed with judging things while they're still in progress. V friends is a baby. You don't judge a man at two and a half years old. I met so many of you one-on-one -on -one today and I've had so many other interactions with you over the last 10 years, two years, three years. I judge none of you. I judge absolutely none of you. Every one of us is on our journey. There will be good years, there will be bad years. This year I saw a lot of you for the second year and some of you accomplished the things you said to me you were gonna do last year at VCon. Others were on a path to accomplishing it but a tragedy in their actual life stopped them. Others couldn't even start the progress because the day they got back after VCon, the high came down and real life took over. My friends, so many of you are judging others while they're still a work in progress. And the one that you're judging the most is yourself. If I could somehow get this community over the next 40 years to stop judging themselves and start being a friend to themselves, everything, and I mean everything, will change. I am a more fortunate man than most because of my circumstance. I started further along not because of anything other than the emotional infrastructure I had with my DNA, my parents, and my circumstance. Yet I have plenty of things to continue to work on and have worked on. We're all on our journey. You must stop judging yourself. And I am incredibly honored that I get to, with these characters, with these characters that are gonna come out right now, I, yeah, watch this, it's gonna be really funny. With these characters that I, let's go AA. Let's fucking go Black Hat. Get up here. Alert fucking ape. Oh, you didn't know? The heart trooper. Who's got love for the Black Hat? Has anyone ever thought why a black cat is the fucking mascot of V Friends? Because we, I've got a lot of thoughts on it. We picked a black cat. The world told us that a black cat was unlucky. That a black cat was bad. We are going to, over the next 40 to 50 years, change the fucking script. We are gonna teach the world that a black cat is lucky. We're gonna change a lot of other perspectives along the way too, but most of all, we're gonna start with this little small community in this stadium tonight, and we're gonna start by changing our collective perspectives day by day. I wish you nothing but help. I wish you nothing but happiness. I wish you nothing but the strength to start being accountable to the truth, not how you want to paint it. I want to see you back here in a couple hours. I want every ass in the seat for Jordan fucking Sparks. Because I want the opportunity to give you one last hug, one last dap, one last selfie before we go back out and do this shit virtual, cause we do, I'm gonna make you and then we're gonna get our asses back together in a fucking year. That's what I want from you. Maybe in Toronto. Maybe in Atlanta. 
maybe in Dubai. Maybe in New fucking Jersey. The truth is I actually do not know where the fuck next year's Vicon is. But I can tell you one thing right now, every fucking person here is gonna plus one up next year because what I saw in people's eyes this year was last year was not a fucking fluke. People got into their fucking dome this year that this shit's fucking different and I can't wait to see all you next fucking year. Make some fucking noise.